Jason Lee Podcast. What up? It's me, Jason Lee, and we're back for a second episode. Are we going to be clap? Yes! I have to say, a lot of you had a lot to say in the comments. Thank you, first of all, for showing up. I've learned a long time ago that whether you love or hate me or the show or anything that I produce, you're going to still show up. Why? Because I'm going to give you all the hot piping tea that you can't wait to see. Anyway, this is the Jason Lee Podcast. You know, I think a lot of people uh, are confused. And so I want to start by saying the Jason Lee Show is where I do interviews with celebrities and we have fun games that uh, Jill and Marina have put together for us to have a great time. And then on the Jason Lee Podcast, this is where I, I, Jason Lee, come here to tell you what I think about the culture, pop culture, politics, and all the fuckery that's going on that you all subscribe to on a daily basis. All you fucking TikTokers and Instagrammers and whatever the fuck they call y'all now. YouTubers. Um, so, yeah, and then this is my bullpen. So for those of you that say you miss Blue and Damage, that's great. Head over to their Instagram pages and follow them. They're still <laughs> friends and family to Hollywood Unlocked and the Jason Lee Experience. But this is my bullpen, my team that's holding me down here behind the scenes and you know, they're here to help react to uh, the nonsense. And Marina <laughs> is a master researcher. Now, let's put some respect on Marina's name really quick. Marina used to work for the Kelly Clarkson show and the Steve Harvey show. And she's been around the industry, not the way that some of your favorite influencers have been. <laughs> um, she's actually been a part of making some hit shows the best that they are. And we are in our quest with you, the viewing audience, to get an Emmy. Not on this show. This show is not even going to get a Webby. This show is... <laughs> <laughs> the show, show is trash. different. And then um, Lee, my friend Lee Charm, who, you know, he used to sell sex videos on Snapchat. Can I say that? I actually never saw a sex video. Oh. Well, ever. anyway, um, well, well, Rico okay. did. But anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, somebody <laughs> actually asked me in the comments if you were a porn star. <laughs> that's, that's Rico. That's, that's new. <laughs> I'm not. What? You saw that? that? Yeah, I sent it yeah. to Rico. I'm but like, he, start You're one. young. This is not a world that we live in anymore where like OnlyFans culture has changed selling sex. I'm going to OnlyFans, just so you know. You're going to well, do sex? Well, I'm not going to do sex, but you know, I'm going to do some things. How some did I skip to OnlyFans to go and do porn? Like, that's, <laughs> well, well, OnlyFans is porn. That's okay. They saw me not. drunk in Mexico once. I skipped weed and alcohol and went straight to heroin. So <laughs> it is what it is. And look, those of you that are tuning in, we, we love that yeah. you're a part of this movement. I've coined this the Jason Lee experience because although we have the Jason Lee show at Revolt and we have the Jason Lee podcast here on Hollywood and Lockdown Networks, we're actually partnering with somebody to bring this podcast to life in a very big way. And... Uh, I have one more big bag alert that's going to just bother you all because I have a daily show coming, which means not only do you have us here on Mondays and Fridays with the podcast and Tuesdays and Wednesdays at Revolt, you're going to have me Monday through Friday somewhere else. And on top of that, I might just be over on Facebook since my Facebook is monetized and I'm making a whole bunch of money. Mm. Period. Yeah. Mm. All right. So uh, let's talk about the week. Now, I know that I said that I was going to come here and tell you all what I was doing during the week, but I, for whatever reason, can't think of what I did other than going to everyday people party <laughs> and walking around. I did see Normani. Um, Normani is underrated. She is extremely talented. She's beautiful and she's a nice girl. But I have to give y'all the tea. Her phone was cracked like a motherfucker. I don't understand how y'all be having money. Walking around here with these cracked ass phones. She probably broke it doing an eight count. You know, she'd be in rehearsal and stuff, so. Okay, well look, let's get the show started. Um, anyway, I wanna tell you all something else we've been working on because a lot of you have been waiting for us. By the way, they move my soundboard sounds around. I don't even know what's on here in general, but I really don't know now and it's color coded. But we've been working on something for a long time and guess what's here? The Gag Nation merch, take a look. The Gag Nation line is finally here. So you know when somebody tells me that I can't do something, what am I going to do? I'm going to do it. So I didn't just build my own show, The Jason Lee Show. I built my own merch line too. Why? Because the Gag Nation, all of you, you're my family. And everything is fire. Trust me, we got sneakers, robes, hoodies, slides, mugs, and a smoker's bundle with trays and grinders for all y'all that do all of that. It's a limited time drop. It's only here one time. So once it's sold out, you're never going to get it again. So head over right now to the website, hollywoodunlock.com slash shop to secure your spot right now.
First of all, I take absolutely no credit for that. The only credit I take for anything is that I pay for everything. I got to give a shout out to Rob Smith, shout out to Sean Harrison, who designed it all, shout out to all the models and my friends, Takara and Sky from Black Ink, who pulled up to model for it. And Rico, we thought about you with the Smokers Bundle. You like that? Yeah, yeah, I got to see me with the so, bonnet. Yeah, so tell all your friends in the DR and Buffalo that they can get a Smoker Bundle. But anyway, make sure you go check it out. The whole line drops uh, May 8th right on hollywoodunlock.com slash shop. And when it's all gone, it's a wrap. And I forgot to wear my Letterman jacket, but that is great quality. I'm going to wear it next week. It is not no Sheen shit, okay? The, the le we want to deal with Sheen, so oh, we love Sheen shit. We love okay, Sheen. thank you. We don't shame any brand that breaks <laughs> a bag here at the Jason Lee Podcast. You know, a lot of y'all will go and just trash people and trash brands because you think they don't hear you. This oh microphone God. goes all the way to Japan, Singapore, and everywhere around the world. And shout oh out to God. everybody around the world that watches. I see a lot of you from Africa pulling up, a lot of you from the UK. I know that we're not just talking to people in Hollywood. Hollywood Unlocked is really about opening Hollywood Unlocked for the world, and we've built a global audience and so i have to say to all of you out there rep your city rep your hood or rep your country or your continent in the comments <laughs> but leave me and my bullpen alone this is my bullpen these are not my co-hosts they are yes and yeah. marina is the blackest croatian we're gonna ever oh see stop calling her a white girl you know uh right. a really quick story for those of you that have been following me you already know this but i met marina when she was on my instagram story and i because she's nosy as hell she does research <laughs> oh, that's what no she does period. she knows the tea before i know the tea I, I saw her and I saw that she worked at the Steve Harvey show. Well, I was a fan of Steve Harvey. I'd never been on the show and this was when I was on my come up. So for all you hustlers, I want you to understand this is how the hustle gets real. I DM'd her, I said, you gonna check my Instagram and not like say something to me or something. What I said, mm -hmm. I said, are you not gonna invite me on the show or something? Yeah, and then you just said straight up, like I wanna be on TV, I wanna be on the Steve Harvey show. I said, with no context, I wanna no. be on the Steve Harvey show. Next thing I know, I was booked on the Steve Harvey show, went on there. Steve actually really liked me on the show. Um, he ain't pulled up since. <laughs> oh, no. Where's the cricket? No, oh, no, no. no. Oh. I'm going to give the shade cam shade. <laughs> Not, I can't shade Steve because he OG. Oh, he don't no. give a fuck. No, but that's why everyone always asks me how I met you. And I'm like, Jason slid in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> and then Seriously. she told me she was a fan of Cardi B. And so then I surprised her taking her mm -hmm. to meet Cardi, uh, which was a fun experience. I think I left you there at the party with Cardi because you didn't want to yeah, leave. Yeah, you left. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, I was big as hell then. Two of them pictures, and they'll never resurface. Anyway, Ooh. enough Ooh. of all of that. Um, I know why you all showed up. Oh my god, I can't. Bitch, you tried it. I don't know where any button is, so at this point, I'm just pushing <laughs> buttons. Okay, look at wait. I know why you all showed up. Um, it's the tea with Jason Lee. Well, look, there's some real shit happening in the world that I want to wake all of us up because a lot of us out there be woke on Instagram, but we ain't really woke because you're, you've fallen asleep to think that democracy is not going to be uh, erased, as you know it. Uh, this happened in Tennessee. Oh, I'm still learning where my, uh, where my ass is. <laughs> <laughs> this happened in Tennessee, okay? Some lawmakers were expelled. Now, this is some wild, wild shit for those of you that don't understand, and so this may be a little boring to some, but it's very educational if you just pay attention and bear with me. So something went down in Tennessee that I wanted to bring to all of your attention if you haven't been paying attention. There were two black lawmakers and a white girl who were all um, caught up in some scandal that they uh, created over there in Tennessee. It really wasn't a scandal. They were standing up for people's children because there was a big uh, violent um, situation out there where some uh, kids were sh shot, right, at mm -hmm. a school. Yeah. Well, these two uh, Tennessee lawmakers, these black Tennessee lawmakers, were expelled from the House of Representatives from protesting against gun violence. So we had two black men stand up against gun violence, the gun violence that is permeating in all of our communities because y'all that don't look like us put liquor stores on every corner. Mm -hmm. You have policing, you have, you know, policing, which we know is the trans. It's not the trans, not the trans as you know it here. Because every time uh, I say trans, I think, yeah. Okay. No comment. It was, you said no comment. No. It was, you know, slavery, Jim Crow, police and jails. Well, anyway. Last Thursday on April 6th, Justin Jones, he's a first time lawmaker, and Justin Pearson, a first time lawmaker, and a white girl named Gloria Johnson, they've all been serving since 2019. They were put on a ballot to be expelled because they were standing up in protest of the Republicans and the conservative people who are pushing the whole NRA movement into our communities, which is allowing people with mental health issues and other people that just want to leave the earth quickly on Instagram Live to go in and shoot up a bunch of ki kids. Three, four, five, six. Uh, year olds at, at some places. But anyway, this is a photo of Justin, uh, Justin, Justin, and Gloria. 
Now, I used to have a bus driver that looked like her. Her name was Judy. <laughs> For real. <laughs> she, no, or did she look like Sparkle? <laughs> You know what? You know what? Those of you that missed last week's podcast, she just called that woman a drag queen. <laughs> Actually, put the picture back Not up. Not Sparkle. You said she had a blonde wig. Sparkle had a Hold blonde on. wig. <laughs> Sparkle's wig did look like that. Okay. Oh. Okay, but Sparkle was skinny because she was doing cocaine with my mom. But anyways, <laughs> listen. Jesus. Oh, listen. Jesus. They were all expelled. Now, let me, let's get back to the seriousness, okay? A week before the expulsion, expulsion they held a protest uh, on the House floor peacefully condemning gun violence because they felt like what happened in Nashville school uh, with the school shooting, which killed three kids and two adults, and the school's headmaster. This person went in and shot children and the person running the school and some staff. These three lawmakers felt like it was important for them to go and stand up to say, hey, we got to get some type of uh, assault weapon ban placed because this is happening in our kids. And so these three lawmakers dubbed as the Tennessee Three, they were trying to get an assault weapons ban passed. And so when they went and did this, it should have been a glorious thing that was received by everybody. But however, the two black men were silenced, not only silenced, but they were kicked out of their positions while the white woman... <clears throat> Sounds survived. like America to me. The what's expulsion. Like what's and new? you know what's crazy when you say it sounds like America? I, I was literally thinking of Dubai. You've been to Dubai. You've been to Dubai. You yeah. ain't been there yet. Mm -mm. You'll go with me one time. It is so quiet in Dubai. The noise of Instagram and social media and whatever. And some would say because they don't have a democracy. They don't have a democracy. They have a king, a ruler, and then they have the people <laughs> yeah. that tell you you're going to die if you break the rules. Yeah, which much. some may say they don't like that. But I actually love being in Dubai, which is why I'm getting my uh, residency there. This country... Democracy, I think, has at some point just gotten out of control. Yeah. If you have little kids being murdered in a school or black people being murdered in a supermarket or churches with assault weapons, and I'm a person that has an assault weapon. I have an AR-15. I, I, I'm getting it clean next week because I never know who's going to pull up on my block. And I have pulled it out on a couple of people. Yes, we're not going to get into it. <laughs> but so. if they told me I had to give my AR-15 away, I would be okay with that. Because I have two mm -hmm. sawed off. Not sawed off. I have two shotguns. <laughs> I have a Glock. I have a 9 millimeter, And I have a 40. I have enough guns to where if you want to take my power rifle away, I'm okay with that. Well, Justin Pearson spoke up. And he called out the lack of democracy in the House for them wanting to expel him because of him standing up. And this is what he had to say. Dude, we are losing our democracy. This is not normal. This is not okay. If you look at what it takes to expel a member, what it should take, most of the times that a member of the Tennessee State Legislature have gotten expelled the last two times in particular. One, the guy committed sexual assault against 22 people. The other committed bribery. We broke a House rule because we're fighting for kids who are dying from gun violence and people in our communities who want to see an end to the proliferation of weaponry in our communities, and that leads to our expulsion. This is not democracy. This is not what it is supposed to look like, and everybody needs to be very afraid and very worried that there are people in positions of power who are using and wielding that power to expel people who are duly elected to their seats. We came here to fight for our constituents. We came here to lift up the issues of people who are suffering. Six people died in Nashville at the Covenant School. Three were nine years old, but instead of focusing on that, Representative Jones, Representative Johnson, and myself are being expelled from the State House because we said we cannot do business as usual. No one should be wanting to operate as though this is not happening, as though we are not living in a gun violence epidemic in the state of Tennessee. And the solutions that are being offered is actually to reduce the First Amendment rights of people who speak up on behalf of their constituencies, who speak up on behalf of people who are tired of the guns, who are tired of seeing legislation being passed that lowers the age for you to carry, tired of seeing legislation being passed that says you don't need a permit, tired of legislation being passed that says if we get teachers guns, that's somehow going to fix the problem. People are tired of these non-real solutions to a real problem that we are suffering from. I mean, you, you does could, it make sense? It does, yes. because if you think about it, we have like people, governors and uh, like state officials taking away black history rights and changing laws so we won't learn about that. But it's ironic, they won't ever change gun or reform or ch the policies that protect Americans and kids. And the sad part about it is, is that I think democracy sounds good, but we actually don't actually have one. It's like white people versus everybody mm -hmm. else. So if it doesn't apply to a white person, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You could tell in the voice his frustration. It's crazy that that's even real. Like, I don't know why it's impossible for like America to make a uh, racism be a crime. It have happened for so long, but the people in power 
won't allow that. Because they agree with it. Well, they wouldn't make racism a crime because black people aren't racist. It would only apply to white people. Right. And even the right. lady, the white lady that stayed, she even said on the mic, Rob and I were watching at CNN, and she was like, I'm only standing here and I'm only not expelled because of my skin color. Right. She even said it. Wait, yeah. so she's so they both spelled, but she's not. Right. Right. But so no, yeah. so part of the part of the issue is that, you know, people have to understand this is why I've always said from days when I worked in education, uh, as and working with the black student unions. Black people have to make sure that white people and non-black people are a part of the process because mm, yes. you won't eradicate racism by just black people stand up against it because black lives and black issues that pertain to black lives don't matter. That's why Black Lives Matter was a thing or is a thing. And so when you look at it and you look at the fact that these men are sitting there fighting for the young kids that died in the community that mm -hmm. still could be at risk. There was actually a photo. I don't have the photo, but there's a photo of a young white kid on a bus looking at the, out the window, terrified. And somebody said this image, my friend, I think Fadia, who's moved to, um, to uh, Nashville, posted on her social media, is something that just, just like stays in your mind because mm -hmm. kids nowadays don't have to worry about going and getting a good education alone or going to an overcrowded classroom or going and having free lunch or having access to nutritious meals or care on. They have to think about, am I going to die before I get home to see my mom and dad? Now, Justin Jones, the other person who was expelled, he agreed and said that Tennessee has lost its democracy by expelling people who were voted in by the people. Exactly. And it's a pathway to authoritism. Exactly. Authoritarianism. See, I don't even, I, they, they took that book out of my school. Take a look. I mean, moving forward, this, this is setting a precedent that any member who voices dissent or opposition can be expelled from the legislative body. This is very unprecedented in Tennessee, um, and this has never happened in our history. But what the nation is seeing is that th we don't have democracy in Tennessee, and that if we don't act, um, we, we have some very dark days ahead. And so we have to respond to this um, with, with mass movements. Uh, Nonviolent movements, I will continue to hold them accountable and demand action because this is not about me, but this is about trying to silence and expel the movement that we were trying to, to amplify on the House floor. You said today that this doesn't seem like America to you. Uh, this is, does not seem like America. To expel voices of opposition and dissent um, is a signal of authoritarianism and it is very dangerous. And I hope that as a nation watches that that we that we we put this this light on Tennessee to say that this should sound the alarm across the nation that we're entering to very dangerous territory. Well, let me let me say this. I support what you're saying. I support your movement. I support both of you. As a former organizer, somebody who's been involved with politics for the last 15 or so years, I have to disagree with you on something. This does seem like America. This is the same America that told Colin Kaepernick he couldn't play football because he kneeled on a field to stand in protest of injustices and racism in NFL. This is the same country where Donald Trump called for Barack Obama to prove that he was a U.S. citizen mm. as he was a sitting uh, duly elected president of the United States. This is the same, it's the same America that uh, allowed a sitting president to tell other white people to climb up the Capitol walls and go in and kill the vice president. He didn't say, I mean, he suggested, you know, let's stand, stand back, stand down, whatever, stand up uh, and go and overthrow the election of a, a President Vi uh, Biden. And what I love about President Biden selecting Kamala Harris, who a lot of you don't like, and I understand why there's a disconnect between this administration, their messaging and the people. I get it. I see it. I've said it to both of their faces. When I met the, me and Marina met the president, when I walked up to him and shook his hand, he said, nice damn suit. <laughs> and I said, thank you, Mr. President. You're one of the most underrated presidents in U.S. history. And he looked at me and I moved on to the, where the white people was at. And, and I've sat and I've had coffee with Kamala Harris and I've spent time with her a few times now. And each time I've seen her, I've been impressed by the way she carries herself mm -hmm. and how strong she is as a black woman in the first uh, black uh, vice president of the United States. And so I see a lot of people frustrated with her. And every time we post her, I see all the comments. I saw the reaction to the clip that went viral with Amanda Seals when she was here talking about uh, comments that Kamala's made in the past. Kamala made a similar statement where she said she doesn't believe America's racist. America is a racist country that's built on racism. We all ideally wanted to not be racist and we want to eat racism, but we're not there yet. And what I love about Kamala is that she knows when to pull up. She pulled up uh, for Tyreek when he was murdered at the funeral, when that them, them, um, black police officers killed him. But she pulled up here to support these two, and this is what she said. It wasn't about the three of these leaders. It was about who they were representing. It's about whose voices they were channeling. <laughs> Understand that. And is that not what a democracy allows? A democracy 
Democracy says you don't silence the people. You do not stifle the people. You don't turn off their microphones when they are speaking about the importance of life and liberty. That is not what a democracy does. Give me a fair chance to be heard. If I feel like I'm so wrong, shouldn't I have the courage to debate it? Listen, the reason why I wanted to show that is because I think at times you guys think Kamala is weak. And Ta Kamala is uh, a very successful attorney. And that was the Kamala that I knew when she was fighting on the Hill as a part of the Senate. A lot of you have forgotten that. And a lot of you think because she's the vice president, she's supposed to be out here doing what the president is supposed to do. The president is the president. She is the vice president. So she works under the president's agenda. But I do love that she's pulling up for the things that matter. Now, let me tell you, things turned in the, in the four days after that because Justin Jones was reinstated into his position. Now, on uh, April 10th, with a unanimous vote, uh, the, the Nashville Metropolitan Council reappointed Justin Jones to the House of Representatives mm -hmm. as an interim lawmaker. Now, here he is taking his plaque, take show that picture, and being sworn back in. And so, you know, people are now happy that justice, I guess, or whatever is being served. But what people are failing to realize is that just as we've seen Roe versus Wade, where women have lost in some states their right to choose abortion, there's a whole conversation going online now about be, being able to get certain medication at certain uh, places like Walgreens. I mean, different states are buckling down. And, and I think what people are failing to see is that democracy, as they think it is, is a permanent thing, and it's not. And so when you look at something like this, where the people that we elect, we elected those people in, I didn't, but those people in Tennessee were elected in by their folks, and they were just removed by a vote because folks who don't look like them and don't stand for their sub their issues that you guys may have elected them to advocate for wanted them removed. Isn't that scary? Yeah, but that's like the Tennessee way. That's how they do it down there. You know, like it's like, not just the Tennessee way. It's the Texas way. The it's South. the Florida way with DeSantis. The it's it is the American right. way. North Carolina as well. You got to add them in there too. But all those red states, they feel like it's still Jim Crow. They feel like they can still just do whatever they want. But what I love is the only difference that we have now is we have social media. Without social media, without the president, which I'm going to give her props for. I was vice the president. Vice president. Correction, vice president. I'm not the biggest fan of her. I'm, she's growing on me. But what makes me rock with her is first Tyreek, she spoke up for him. Now she's speaking up. I haven't really seen a sitting president speak on like civil rights like that. Not with that much. She's passion. still not the sitting president. She's the vice president. But vice president. But yeah. she's still like, you know, we haven't seen the vice president or president. Really, we haven't seen a speaker of the house. Nobody. Well, in all fairness to Barack, because Barack didn't get a lot of uh, support. I mean, people thought he didn't do enough for black people. He was the first black president. He wasn't going to come in and erase racism. Right. Racism, right. first of all, understanding politics again, as we said last time, there's federal, there's state, and then there's city and local, right? Barack was the first president ever to stand at a podium and say, um, uh, Trayvon Martin, if he was my son, he would have looked like, if I would have had a son, he would look like Trayvon. He's, that was a very monumental time where he acknowledged that this v act of violence uh, against um, you know, uh, Trayvon was unfair when George Zimmerman gunned him down in his neighborhood if he was going to get uh, the tea and the Skittles. Now, what's sad about that is there was no justice brought to George Zimmerman, and the laws still have not changed with Stand Your Ground. You can still get killed in any way mm -hmm. if you can say you felt like uh, you were in fear. There was a guy driving down the street on the freeway in Florida, I, one of those states where Stand Your Ground is, and he was shooting at moving cars, mm -hmm. and he was found not to have a problem. You were going to say something. Oh, I was going to say, it reminds me of, I'm first-generation American from Croatia, but it's, I agree with the first Justin. It's definitely not democracy because my my grandparents and parents left communist Yugoslavia, which is what Croatia used to be. And my grandpa was always thrown in prison for like speaking out and like writing poetry and like saying anything against the government. And this is what it's given. It's given very much Yugoslavia by like, oh, they're pe and it was a peaceful protest. That's yeah, the right. wildest thing to me. So to just be like expelled, like, and I'm so happy that they're back. Um, and I'm happy that they're like getting their shine because they are stars and icons in their own way. And yeah, this is well, just you know, again, people get your head out the PlayStation, get your head out of smoking weed, get your head out of popping purse, get your head out of OnlyFans, get your head TikTok. out of Instagram and TikTok and look at what's happening in the world. Not to mention shout out to the Iranian folks over there fighting for justice where they killed that protester, the woman. And, and I think a guy has been in prison over there, a rapper who's been rapping about uh, justice and democracy in some of these countries. I was actually... 
uh, shown a video during the recent election in Nigeria where a, like, a group of like militia got out and shot a man dead in the middle of the street who was protesting against the president who since has lost. They have a new president over there. And so, again, democracy is an idea. And mm -hmm. I think that when you look at our, your participation in it, you have to see, like, are you actually a part of it or are you part of the problem? You're either a, You're either a part of the solution if you're active in protecting it or you're part of the problem if you're actively working against it or not voting to be a part exactly. of it. All right. Either way, congratulations to both Justin's and Sparkle. <laughs> Sparkle. <laughs> okay. You started this. I'm sorry. Well, we talked about this last week, and it's back. This blue check has pissed off everybody for me to Doja Cat. Now, me and Doja Cat haven't always seen eye to eye. <laughs> Doja, I know I heard you was mad at me, but I also heard you were open to meeting. I would love to meet with you. Um, I'm still going to stand on what I said before, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. we've all grown. And you've actually grown on me because you do stand up for the things that matter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why you cut all your eyebrows off, though, but it's your body, your choice. Okay, well, last week we talked about Instagram and Meta. And those folks over there at Twitter and all of these different places that are now offering paid verifications. If I hurt your feelings last week, I'm going to do a quick recap to hurt them one more time. Look, all of you paid influencers are now fucking up the game. And I have to tell fucking you, I pissed up. a lot of you off. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, who owns Meta, has now changed Instagram and following the footsteps of Elon Musk and over at Twitter, because now they're making users pay for the verification. Now, this allows you to instantly, regardless of who you are, you can be a cake baker, a cigarette roller, you can be a dog walker. You, you can be can, homeless. You could be homeless. You could be your grandma. Any, any Your grandma can literally be verified at this point. <laughs> Wild. So according to Meta, buying a blue check will now help small businesses establish a presence on Instagram and Facebook and also provide a suite to support them. Now, for those of us that built legitimate brands and legitimate businesses, we did not become legitimate when we got the blue check. We did the work that set the path for legitimacy exactly. that earned the blue check that mm -hmm. let people know we were a verified brand that they could trust. So the exactly. blue check represented trust. Let me show you the first post that I posted on Instagram that drove you all crazy. This one, I said Instagram sold 44 million blue checks in one day at $15 a check. That's $660 million that they made in one day just because y'all wanna be somebody y'all not. What I was really attacking was how corporations and corporate greed has taken control of the world and has preyed on the character flaws of individuals who are barely living day to day yep. to become more wealthy. Right. Facebook and Meta, Instagram just laid off 11,000 workers to cut down their workforce and save money. They then implemented this program to make $660 million in one day that they're gonna make every month off of you idiots, mm -hmm. which is gonna give them $8 billion increase in revenue per year. And on top of that, they took away the Reels program for influencers who have worked hard to earn the blue checks to be able to go and negotiate mm -hmm. deals or brands to make mm -hmm. a living. And so what they're going to do, like when you say they're looking at the Reels program and they're going to take a few, they're going to they're going to reconsider maybe another color. They're going to spend three or four months brainstorming ways of making yeah, yeah, it different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after six months of making six hundred and sixty million dollars a month, they're going to come up with a new what plan. Yep, yep. And guess what? Probably less than 50% of y'all, 44 million people will drop the badge and still be paying an additional $330 million a month. I fundamentally have an issue with white people who are able to profit off the pain or desires to be equal to or better than a people of color from all over the world. That is exactly what's happening. Now, let me make this uh, make sense for those of you that may not understand what all that means because you don't care about a blue check. For all those of you that smoke weed, let me talk to you, Rico. <laughs> you got my full attention. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. If you had, so when you go to the smoke shop to buy, do you do, what type of papers do you buy? I buy papers. Oh, uh, CV, CVD, something like that. CVD papers. Yes. Yeah, okay. So say you went to go buy CVD papers. How much do they cost? Two or three hours. For how many? Like 60. 60? 60 papers, yeah. 60? Yeah. Okay. It's two or three dollars. Say if you went, it was 2 or $3 for the 60 papers, but $10 city tax. So now it was $13. Would you like that? Right. Okay, so I was in New York recently with somebody, <laughs> and they wanted weed. And we went to the store. Remember, I don't know if you remember. We went to the store to go buy the papers. The papers for one was like $6. The papers for like, or the rolling things for like three was like 
$20 because the city imposed a tax on those products to make them more expensive so that way you would want them less. But if you smoke, whether it's weed, hookah, or cigarettes, you're an addict, like all of us, and you gotta keep smoking. So it's a way of adding tax. It's the same with, what if I was to say every time you go to buy, oh, I'll tell you for those of you that travel, when you go to a hotel and they add resort fees, Ugh. resort fees be $100. What's changed with the resort between when they implement it now? That's why the president, mm -hmm. Biden, is trying to remove the resort fees. Well, Doja Cat is pissed off like I am. And a week later, everybody got their blue checks. Grandmas got blue <laughs> checks. People who jump rope got blue checks. Everybody. I got into an argument with a girl that had 340-something <laughs> followers about why I was an elitist who was mad that she got her blue check. I went and looked at what she did. She was a celebrity photographer. She ain't had one celebrity on her page. Well, either way, Doja Cat has stepped into the conversation because she just lost her check on Twitter. She's checkless. And she had a lot to say, and fans noticed that she didn't have it. And before I show you this asset, I have to say, a lot of y'all are so shady. <laughs> Look at this. Not that Why y'all choose the bald head and no eyebrows? Because this is literally what she looked like. But she <laughs> looks cute. Anyway, she, she looks cute. The fan that. said, to have to pay for Twitter Blue now, what has Elon done to you, Doja? And Doja fired back was saying, Having a blue tick now means there's a higher chance that you're a complete loser and that you're desperate for validation from famous people. I, I don't disagree. I, I, agree. I don't. I, I agree. like. I'm verified, real verified, but I had to work so hard to get it. I had to hire a publicist. I had yeah, to release music. That nipple music. been out all show. I'm sure that nipple <laughs> earned you that. Listen, I don't care what I had to do. I had to show a nipple, a leg, a third leg, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like I'm verified because I put in work. I put in the work, I hired a publicist, I what released kind of music, I have a Google knowledge panel. My problem is when I Google these people, nothing come up. You haven't done any work. So it's like, what is the purpose of it? You don't even know what to do with it when you get it. So the only thing you're doing is messing it up for everybody else. The point is to get in their pockets. Yeah, but it's getting in their pockets, but messing up the game for us who actually put in work and have the credentials. That's my mm -hmm. only issue. With it. And again, if for me, I don't want y'all fighting in the comments with who put in the work and who didn't put in the work because there was a standard set. And again, I said this last show, I'll say it one more time. I think what Doja was saying is actually true because you're looking for validation. We all know that people see the blue check people first because you just scroll and you see a blue check, mm -hmm. you stop and look. Now I'm stopping so many times that I just don't even look anymore. I don't care who likes anything, who comments. In fact, please don't even come to my Instagram anymore. Just stay away. <laughs> all of your blue checks, famous or not. I think that the, it's, it, the idea that I was trying to share was that this preying on people and their emotional instabilities or emotional desire to feel more than they are and taking advantage of them is the problem. It's just like the resort fees. Again, I don't understand as much as I travel. I was looking at my travel report. I was spending $50,000 a month in travel alone. And then I haven't even broken down how much of that is fees that we don't even know what they pertain to. Extra towels, extra water, extra <laughs> lighting. Like All I right. pay for everything at the hotel. Now I pay for resort fees. So, yeah, I, I agree with you, Scam. Doja. Um, and uh, if you ever want to come on the Jason Lee show and talk about it, we're available. Love you, Doja. Okay. Love Doja. All right. Well, let me tell you what I don't love. Um, well, what I do love <laughs> is that I have a strong um, immune system. And everybody knows, if you've been following me, that I'm on prep. And I'm going to prep you for this. <laughs> oh my this God. guy right here is going around giving HIV. <laughs> now, I'm going to say only because... I don't want to get allegedly. sued. Allegedly. Even though I don't think it's allegedly, but I'm going to say allegedly because I haven't seen the whole report. But I'm going to just tell you, this guy is a 39-year-old Jamaican man. His name is Jermaine Scott. He's going viral because he was sentenced to three years for knowingly infecting a woman with HIV 14 years ago. Let me show you his picture. Let's get, let's get a bigger picture. This is Jermaine. Now, I have a problem, Jermaine, that you're a black man out here knowingly doing it. Because you know, this is typically the news that we're reporting on others. And you took advantage of this woman. No telling where you caught it from. It could have been a heroin thing, allegedly. It could have been, it could have been, you could have been in these streets. But either way, Jermaine, you knowingly gave a woman HIV and been on the run and only got three years. Now, he was diagnosed with the virus in 2005, which was before a lot of the antiviral medication that we have now, which is before a lot of, you know. Mm -hmm. The only person we know that survived this was magic. And we don't know what magic he used or whether it was Dr. Sebi or some type of pill. But either way, um, you know, this was back in 2005 that he, he contracted and gave it to this woman. And so he was prescribed medication back then and just refused to take it. What? 
That's so wrong. this is so anyway, he was he was preventing he was given the medication to prevent uh, giving it to other people. It didn't take didn't apparently. And in 2009, he met this woman when he was in the UK. Uh, and after stopping stopping the medication, um, you know, he had sex with her and didn't tell her that he was positive. So in 2011, one of his former lovers told the woman that he had HIV. So she went and got tested, and that's how she found out that she had this this disease. Shout out to the ex. What? So right. now that she confronted uh, Jermaine about it, he's allegedly confirmed it, and he, then he left her after that. Uh, so she uh, now she... has HIV. He has HIV. He's going to jail, and he's only getting three years. I personally think, excuse me, I personally think, especially somebody who's from the gay community who, you know, we have lots of education and resources and communication about this disease, who was feared catching it, who had somebody die from it when I was younger. Um, I think you should be in prison for life. Agreed. I think you should, be, because yes. HIV is, it's not a death, death sentence, sentence, but it is a life sentence. So mm -hmm. I feel like you should be in prison for life. If you knowingly gave somebody HIV, have you ever had the fear of somebody intentionally trying to give you yeah. something? Yes. Yes. Because I understand the psychotic mind. And I hear so many horror stories, mainly living out here in L.A. I originally am from New Jersey, but I lived in New York a long time. But I would hear stories of people that would literally target people that they're jealous of and, like, try to make them sick. And it's just crazy because mm -hmm. the idea of you trusting somebody enough to sleep with them and then if you're trusting them to sleep with them unprotected, that's even scarier. But it's even sick. The idea is so sick that you're trusting somebody, you're sleeping with them unprotected, and they're trying to kill you. Because it's not a death sentence, but you don't die from HIV. You die from the complications. Shout out for her for reopening the case because I know what happened a long time ago. And I'm happy Like th I'm happy he's in jail, but I agree three years is way too short. And this yeah. is an example short. of a straight man or a seemingly straight man or whatever having sex with a woman and giving it to her and her not knowing. And her mm -hmm. thinking that she could trust the person that she's opened up literally to. Um, and he violated her in a very public way. I mean, a very personal way. And I think it's just... It's a really sad thing because I, I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll, I'll share a story here. I remember, you know, when I first started to get recognized and a lot of people sliding my DMs and a lot of energy was coming at me and I was participating in a lot of the energy. <laughs> um, I remember sure. somebody reaching out to me on social media and saying, be careful. There's somebody who's knowingly and intentionally trying to give you HIV. It scared the oh my hell out God. of me. What? But I was only talking to a couple people at the time and I knew exactly who the person was and I've never reported him and I've never put him on blast but I will tell you I don't know if he's dead now I hope he is oh God. but please yes I hope he died of the very thing Jesus. he tried to pass on to me oh please don't call on my Jesus my I gotta Jesus call him right now excuse sorry, me excuse yeah. me my Jesus sent me to the clinic to get my negative test and prep but yeah. when people plot on people like that because I never thought in the I've never thought in a million years that somebody would be so evil to intentionally seek you out to try to kill you or try to hurt you mm -hmm. in that way. And so I think that one, this is a great conversation to have because what I will say is, that although I told my story about how I was full of anxiety and stress and all that to go get tested, the fear of getting tested the first time now has made it so easy for me when I go in and I go in with, I'm on prep, I'm protected, all that. But I go in now with the like, if something was to happen, I know now that I need to move responsibly to figure it out the way that this woman is. But I will tell you again, like anybody doing this to me deserves to die. And I am not somebody to say that the prison system or the judicial system is perfect. And you know, some of you may argue and say, oh, the death penalty is not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Going to school as a nine-year-old is not perfect, clearly. But if we live in a world or we live in a country where you can intentionally go and have sex with a woman knowing that you have HIV, mm -hmm. give it to her and then not think that you should die, they should line you up against the wall like they would in some of these third world countries Jesus. and blow your head off. Yeah, because I mean, if there's if there are people that are still locked up for selling weed, there should definitely be people locked up for trying to plot to give bitches AIDS and do AIDS. <laughs> and yeah. if I was to play the devil's advocate though, it is- Devil's advocate to somebody dying No, 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 no. I'm saying it like this. But it's your own responsibility to watch out for your own health. So therefore, yeah, somebody could be knowingly giving it to you, but it's also important for you to ask questions and no, don't sleep around, get tested. They have kids at home. We have all dated a scammer. Somebody <laughs> who scammed their way into our life and told us that they were this, that, and the mm -hmm. other. We've all dated a dreamer who told us that they were gonna be the next biggest rapper or next biggest this. People are not always honest. People are not always filled with the integrity you may have. People right. may not come to the table with the same type of uh, religious background or education that we have had. 
This man clearly preyed on a woman who felt for him, and he inserted his penis in her, knowing he was injecting her with death. Jesus. It's him Period. with his fake Versace robe for me in his photo. I don't know anything about that. All my Versace robes are linens from an Italian country, uh, and I don't know. But what I do know is I hope that this woman is okay. The woman, she made a police report, and cops arrested this guy on suspicion of recklessly infecting a woman. Uh, but they let him go due to lack of evidence. I also have to tell you, in California, they changed the law where now, in California, there was a law, w mm. and, and please go do your own research. Let's do some research right now, Marina. Mm -hmm. in, Calif in California, there was a law that said you had to tell somebody if you were HIV positive. Now, I believe the law has changed where you now don't have to tell the person. So that you have to check the states of whether or not it's even a required thing. This says, thanks to California State Bill 239, it is no longer a felony to people who are HIV positive to have unprotected sex and not disclose So we status. talk about the lawmakers and all the people. It's not just Kamala and Biden that's trying to be focused on. It's the people you're electing in your neighborhoods who are making this a, a, a legal thing to do. Now, yes, is it okay to say, hey, I, I, I had sex with somebody the other day and I asked them, are you on PrEP? Are you negative? They said, yes, they're on PrEP and yes, they're negative. There, it's okay to have a conversation. Read that body language. If you ask somebody, hey, are you HIV negative? And they go, why would you ask me that? Positive. Positive. Leave. Run up out the house. If you stutter, red flag. Stutter red flag. Anything. I told a story years ago. I was in Oakland. That most beautiful man I had ever seen in the world. We was hugging and laying there, and we was about to get it on. Fine. <laughs> I thought I had bagged me something cute. He said, I got to tell you something. Oh God! So what you what you got to tell me? Is it is that anytime you hear that, it's just your heart drops because you know, you know some shit about to come out. Well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, hey, he says to me, "I'm <laughs> HIV positive," and I in that moment I was like, "Thank you so much for telling me." Like, thank you because <laughs> you didn't have to tell me that. And I ran all the way out the house and I ran down the street <laughs> and hopped in the car. Where did you run to? I ran to my car <laughs> and I left. Because I was that was during the you know the early 2000s, mm -hmm. like late night, early 2000s, where like you just really didn't know much right, about right, HIV and AIDS. Right. And so I, I'm embarrassed that I actually ran out on him like that because I'm sure I left him feeling some type of way. But I had to get the hell out of there, mm -hmm. you know. And but but I would think back. He gave me the respect that this man didn't right, give right, her. Right. Jermaine didn't do that. Now Jermaine's been deported back to Jamaica. Now he was deported because he was living in England illegally, which shows that. His whole consequential experience with the law is all based on technicalities. Mm -hmm. Recklessly giving someone HIV, accidentally being in England. Like, for me, it's just all a mess. Um, and anyway, so the woman has asked the cops to reopen the case. And so they've looked at it. And uh, yeah, he's been charged three years. I still think he should be lined up against the wall and shot. We need our Donald times. Trump lock, her up, lock him up. Yeah, three years. No, he, no he needs to be killed. Oh, OK. I, this yeah. is why I say I feel like, again, it's like if you rape somebody or you molest a kid, you should get your dick cut off. Like, there's why? Why do you need a dick anymore? Because you're if when you are a sick person, you can't control that sickness. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no praying away wanting to stick your dick in your sick dick in somebody and get them fucking sick. Like, no, like accidental shit. Okay, damn, my bad. We both participated. We both didn't know. We both found out together. We're both gonna work it out together or whatever. That's one thing. You got up, got dressed, went out, plotted, and planned to infect this woman. You need to die. And you got, and the the government had to set a freaking law so right. this won't happen again. Because three years, if anybody else have it out there, they were like, "Well, three years, you know." So well, it's not even the government. You can, well, you can't because you're not a citizen yet. But for those of us who are, you're working, you're working your way there. For those of us that are citizens, we can get bills on ballots if we actually care enough. But the problem is, we don't care. No, the problem is the people. On top. No, there's no, that's not how democracy works. The people who are on the bottom are on the top. The people who vote are the top. The people who make the laws are on the bottom. But in our minds, we believe we're inferior to this democracy that this idea that they're on top of us and they're the decision maker. No, we are. We elect them there. Mm -hmm. So we elect, we put them in a position to advocate for our interests. When they get there, they play in the political minefield that we're all a part of where they do what they want to do. Right. We're all mindfucked to believe in that we're secondary to them. They work for us. Bait and switch. Yeah. That's so All right. Well, either way, um, hope you die. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, I don't know what God you sit Indian style and pray to, but if you pray to this one, um, you might be on your way to hell. The Dalai Lama is under fire. Now, I'm sure the Dalai Lama has done a lot of things. I'm sure when you go through 
wherever the Dalai Lama lives or sits, you hear a lot of hmm, a lot of bowl banging or not bowl banging, sexual, but you know the little, the little energy bowls. Well, either way, the Dalai Lama is in trouble because this is his man name is Tenzin Gyatso. He went viral after a clip showed him kissing a young boy and then asking the boy to suck on his tongue. Now, I don't know any of you out there watching that may be fans of mine that actually pray to the Dalai Lama, but you may need to rescind your prayers because this is not cute. Take a look at this photo real quick. This is the Dalai Lama kissing the young boy on the mouth, holding his chin the way I have held many people at the Abbey, sticking his <laughs> tongue out and telling this young boy, he's looking him dead in his eyes, this old nasty fucking wrinkled up ass, prune looking, prune face ass bitch telling this little boy to suck on his tongue. This is the absolute grotesque picture of pedophilia. Now, I don't care what you call it. This clip now has surfaced from February showing this 87-year-old man, holy man, that's what they want me to call him, at his temple with 100 young students who just graduated from his, whatever the foundation he has, sitting there with his, his tongue out. Now, apparently, let me tell you what happened because I don't know. Have you guys seen this photo before today? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. What did you think when you saw it? I just seen the Cardi B video. I have not seen that yet. I saw it and I saw it uncensored and it was disgusting. And he knew the cameras were on. So I'm like, if you do that in public, that means you definitely do it. Or what else are you doing? That part. Well, this is what happened because I had to go do my research. This young boy approached the Dalai Lama to ask him for a hug. He just wanted a hug. It's sort of like when you go to the mall. You got your mom and your dad. You see Santa. You want to sit on his lap. You don't want to start bouncing on Santa's <laughs> lap because Jesus. that's inappropriate, oh, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Shout out to Suki. That'll make sense later. Well, either way, by the way, I've never bounced in public like that. So please keep that as a gift because you'll never get it again. Now, the Dalai Lama had the young boy. Uh, he took the young boy in and he hugged and kissed him. And while keeping a hold on him, he had him in a tight grip. The way that Farrah Franklin was trying to hold on to Destiny's Child, he was holding on to that kid, and he told him to kiss him on the lips. So then he stuck out his tongue and told the boy to suck it. <laughs> what holy water made you think that telling a kid to suck anything was appropriate? Because you did it before, you sick ass. Anyway, the boy tried to stick out his own tongue, but then pulled it back when the Dalai Lama began to laugh and pulled the boy in for another hug. Where's the mom? Oh, when it comes to these holy people, the moms are like, like, let the Lord bless you. Stick your tongue. Like, parents are part of the problem, too, because as soon as you see your young boy or girl sitting in this old 87 man's lap, I don't give a fuck what type of orange pill he's wrapped in. You go snatch your kid up and you get the fuck out. Clearly, that didn't happen. Now, let me show you this picture one more time, just so I can like let it stick in your head. And he looked so uncomfortable in the video. Oh, God, he the little boy was scared, but you can just tell he's like, let me listen to my And elders. on top of that, if you're 87 or you're you know past 65, you know old people breasts be stinking. <gasps> stinking. Excuse Especially me, my don't... audience stops at 55, so if they, they have... beyond 55, huh? They have... Especially they don't have their, their teeth. So they be having chap lips, teeth falling out, stink well, you breath. Know, he, he, you know, ain't no telling what the Dalai Lama eating. Well, either way, huh. he's issued an apology that we don't care about, and this is what the Dalai Lama had to say. <laughs> a video clip has been circulating that shows a recent meeting when a young boy asked His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, if he could give him a hug. His Holiness wishes to apologize to the boy and his family, as well as his many friends across the world for the hurt <laughs> his words may have caused. His holiness often teases people he meets in an innocent and playful way, even in public and before cameras, he regrets the incident. So I just want to know, Dalai Lama, do you go to West Hollywood and put your tongue in people's ass? Because if you're just going to walk around playing around with your tongue out, I know some people who will let you lick it. It's not a little boy. There's nothing cute about that. And the fact that you try to pull him in to a tongue kiss shows that you're sick. And you know what? I don't care what holiness you are. You ain't the Christians that I praise to. You ain't the God that's in my house. And you ain't the you ain't in the Bible that I read. Now, that's not to disrespect any of y'all out there that got the Quran or anything else. You serve your God. But if you think your God is sitting up there somewhere putting his lick, his licking to a little boy, that's not the God that you should be serving. Now, I love my girl Cardi B because Cardi, now everybody knows that she's one to speak her mind. And I actually caught this live. There were 50 something thousand people who saw what Cardi had to say. She ended up reacting to the Dalai Lama's viral moment. Now, remember, she is a mother of two. 
and she has 150 something million followers or whatever. So, of course, she felt compelled while she was on her way to Thailand to speak on the Dolly Lick Him Down Llama, is what she said. I see that he kissed a boy on his mouth, and it's just like, damn, this is just it because it's just like, yo, we really have to protect our kids any way possible, and we have to like let our kids know to be alert and like know that there's a violation when people touch your private parts when it comes to family when it talk to friends when it comes to teachers or when it comes to other kids you know what i'm saying because there's some kids that are more advanced than others so weird shit they be going the fuck on that as you get older and as you get wiser you see that like we live in a very freaky ass world you could go to your favorite porn website right now and like you will see titles like teenager getting fucked by their stepdad, teenage girl getting fucked by their stepmom. Like what type of weird shit is that? These are these are on public porn sites. These type of titles are on public porn sites. A lot of times we say we say to ourselves like is that we gotta watch we gotta watch our little girls, we gotta watch our nieces, we gotta watch our daughters, but y'all gotta watch our sons and your nephews too, because people prey on, on little boys too. Like a mom kissing on a boy and his parents is right there. No, set boundaries. Sometimes um, people, like if you ever watch the LSD church, people let, people let religion, they let people take advantage of their kids because of religion. Every type of relig religion. LSD church is an American fucking religion. And there's fucking religions all around the world that people, their parents let people take advantage of their kid in the name of fucking whatever God they pray. Now, I don't know if the Dalai Lama created this because I'm going to keep this in the studio. Happy drum. But I have to tell you, I agree with everything Cardi had to say. Now, a lot of you started attacking Cardi because of a post that went viral years ago when a certain fan group, not going to go there, put out that she had talked about robbing niggas who was trying to take her home from the strip club. She went off on that. And at first, I was watching the live saying, oh, come on, Cardi, you don't need to respond to that because we all know that you're not a rapist. We all know that you didn't mm -hmm. drug uh, and rape men. Um, we also know the strip culture. We know how strippers are taken advantage of and robbed or beaten or raped by people who go to the strip clubs. And so Cardi, you know, I love that she's a huge superstar, but still keeps her feet on the ground and advocates for strip culture and the people who are out there being victimized every day. So she started commenting on that because people started to attack her saying that she was a rapist. And it wasn't until after her rant that I saw that she followed up with some tweets and this is what Cardi had to say online. She said, this world is full of predators. They prey on the innocent, the ones who are most knowing, unknowing, our children. Predators could be our neighbors, our school teachers, even people with money, power, and our churches. Constantly talk with your kids about boundaries and what they shouldn't allow people to do to them. She followed up with another tweet. And the person said, I agree with the statement. However, we have to reconsider our wording. When we say allow children are defenseless to predators, they can't stop them. What they need to know is that it's always safe coming to tell someone or whatever. And Cardi says, I don't, I don't got to watch my words. I know exactly what I mean from the time you start potty training your kids. You should be telling them, don't let nobody touch your privates, enter the bathroom with you, and don't keep no secrets away from mommy. You took one word and tried to make a debate. Go drink your coffee. Listen, um, what do you think about the video? What do you think about love Cardi? and Cardi's for the kids. She's always been a mom. I love that she, because people listen to her. Like people listen to her, and I, I like those tweets because I don't have any kids, but I never would think to tell my child that. Like that's just crazy. Like the world we live in now, the fact that even before your kid meets the Dalai Lama, you have to tell them, like, like you know, warn people. It's crazy, crazy. Well, that goes with the same thing as like the government. She started speaking for what is happening and the people started attacking her. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. the same way that the government works is like the whole world operates like that. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy that the parents were there that didn't do anything. And the fact that he gets to say an apology, but nothing is being it's done for be what done. he's done. Oh, there's crazy. no accountability. Yeah, but that know. goes back to, again, like there was more conversation about Cardi B's comments than the Dalai Lama. And they always criticize her grammar. You know, I'm on the party they agree. They always criticize her. Yeah. Instead of just focusing on her message, like, right. what? Well, I could chime in on this because I grew up in a church. So, therefore, the conversation that she had with her children is the conversations my parents used to have with us. Uh, it's no secret that the same thing happens in every religion. It happens in every faith. It's not the religion, it's not the people, it's sick people who hide behind those faiths, who use that as a disguise to, like, you know, use whatever their hidden agenda is. But my mom would say, 
don't let nobody touch you. And if we knew that somebody in the church was suspect, we knew stay away from them. Don't go there. Don't go to the bathroom. Did somebody touch your pee pee? Somebody touch your da, da, da. My mom, dad asks us all those questions because it does happen. Mm. I'll say that there's just something sick in general. I think this world is turning. There's a turn happening, and I'll tell you why. There is a really sick thing. I don't want to say it's due to OnlyFans or the church or whatever. There's this thing where everybody is hypersexual or hyper. Everything is related mm-hmm. to sex, 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 and molest and rape and this and that. Me too. This. Like every time I turn on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or anything, it's always about sex. Which I don't know if that's because people are online more, or that, or COVID. We were all in the house, and people felt maybe sexually deprived, or they weren't able to really connect with people. But there's something really sick happening in the world where everything is related to sex. For example, if you go into, if you're live streaming and you see somebody who uh, is on live and say they're 25 or 23 years old. Now, if I'm older and they're 25 years old, there's something wrong with that. And it has to be sex related. Why can't you just be watching somebody streaming? I don't understand the world that we live in. Um, And I try not to participate in the weeds of it all because if you get caught in the weeds, you'll get st- caught on like this hamster wheel of trying mm-hmm. to understand it. Like why that. do you think, or do you think that the world has become more sexualized and why is so? Yes, a million percent. And I was going to say, even to bring up another queen, Rihanna, remember when she posted the kid of her, not the not the first one, but she posted like a second photo of her baby and everyone, she called him daddy. And everyone's like, oh, why are you calling your kid daddy? That's so weird. That's so weird. But I'm like the same way that like Spanish people call their kids, you know, mommy, pop, like little, like that's just it's not even meant in that way, and everyone always tries to skew it in a sexual way when it's never that. It's because they have perverted minds. Like you, if you have a per- perverted, what well, is the projection for me? Right. right. It's right. like your mind went straight right. to that. Right. Now, when I Why see the Dalai be- Lama, those of you who follow the Dalai Lama may say that's his holiness. I see predatorial behavior. Oh, I weird. see something that slipped out in public that we know has to be probably happening behind closed doors. I see something that. If it wasn't the Dalai Lama, if it was Santa Claus, if it was the Easter Bunny, if it was your friend, we, I, w- I would not let my kid, I would not let some man put his tongue near my kid's mouth. That's not even Mm-mm. sanitary. Like, but there's, but why do we not look at that? Why do we look at that picture? But you spend more time attacking Cardi addressing it than addressing the fact that His Holiness was trying to stick his holy tongue in the kid's it mouth. It goes again. I don't know how to say. I don't know how else to say it, but it goes to how the government works like how they operate it's like this system is created for us to go like that and there's nobody changing it and the people who are trying to change it get attacked right Right. so the i feel like the real question is like what can we do to change it is it because what we're fighting against is something that is part of an establishment that it's been that exactly the people that's on top don't want to change that and all the republicans when this photo came out every all the republicans were like well joe biden did this to all the kids too but it's like that's because the republicans doing the same thing behind closed doors with the porn child pornography that's huge with them or with actual porn stars that's why i don't like republicans anything that's Never mind. That's well, mind. listen, yeah. Cardi responded to all the backlash, and this is what she had to say. She said, I got to get off the internet. Shit is insane. I'm getting dragged up and down because I'm telling parents to be careful on people that prey on children. It's craziness. She also went on to say, well, the fans said, um, shit like this going on right in y'all faces, but y'all mad at Cardi for speaking the facts. Watch out, kids. She said, man, I'm telling y'all. And then she also said, well, fans said, Cardi going to have to learn to not read comments. The haters and trolls are always going to try to gain access to her emotions, so don't allow it. She said, you're right. I have to tell you, I, I, I told Cardi this privately. I'll share it with you. I said to her in a text, because she was on a plane. We were texting back and forth about it all. And I said, I really, at first, was concerned that you responded, but I love that you did. I love that you use your platform to advocate for the kids, because you remember, kids are voiceless at times. And kids are usually the... Uh, the um, uh, what do you call them when they're um, invisible people? Mm-hmm. Kids are the invisible people. Yep. And so for her to do that, but I really love the fact that she processed it and thought about reacting. Because mm-hmm. usually Cardi, the old Cardi, and she did this on the show where she talked about, um, you know, that she used to respond. To, just look, take a look. Why do you feel being somebody who never publicly goes after other people is somebody that gets the most hate? I don't know why I get so much hate. I don't know is it because I'm very like vocal or I don't know is because, I don't know. I think it's like probably like three factors. I feel like, I don't know I get a lot of hate. Is it because I respond to it? So people just want to respond out of thing and people just want drama off of me. Cause I'm very sensitive. I ain't going for it. I'm going, I'm very sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just, I don't know is what it is. I'm just a little crazy, crazy. I don't know is it because, um, I am really, I feel like I'm too nice. 
I have to be too nice because people, other people told me that I'm too nice, that I'm too humble, that I'm too this, that I'm too that. And I was talking to another Libra about that. That I mm -hmm. like, it's like we humble, but we could really like, like what? Please, I don't know. It's like different factors that I feel like people just be like probably like hating on me or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I always felt like. Um, like in my whole life, it, it has been like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm such an introvert too. Like I don't really, tr coming from the Bronx and and like dealing with a lot of like like shysty, grimy girls and men. That is just like that's why I'm such a. I guess I'm such an introvert. And see, in that clip, she talked about where she um, has you know kind of refocused her energy and not really responding to everything online. And I know that she's working, but the fact that she actually thought about it a day later and processed, I thought was really good. So shout out to you, Cardi. Continue your platform. And that's the Cardi that we all miss. We like when you talk your shit. So mm -hmm. keep talking your shit. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye, sicko. Well, speaking of another queen that's using her platform or maybe not, Beyonce is under fire because they're saying that she did not help Chloe Bailey. Chloe Bailey, we all know, is... Uh, Beyonce's protege. She's somebody that Beyonce signed, her and her sister Haley. Uh, and they're part of Parkwood Entertainment Group, and she's an artist over there. Well, she dropped her album in pieces, and it only sold 10,000 pieces within the first week. Now, uh, I was more shocked to see that Chloe was signed in 2015 and is barely dropping her debut album eight years later. It's now 2023. And so um, I was concerned that that had happened, but I also understand artist development, and it takes time to develop artists. And um, anyway, that happened, and people were mad because people were saying that Beyonce didn't even tweet about it. Now, this is what some of the fans had to say about that online. This fan, uh, well, Chart Data posted that Chloe's In Pieces debuted at 119 on Billboard's Hot 200, and it only sold 10,000 copies. Well, let me first start with leading with something positive. Chloe, you made it to the um, Hot 200 list. That's a big one. Big one. Because it's a lot of y'all who've been in the game for years who can't even see a list. So <laughs> the fact that you made it to the top 200 is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, fans had a lot to say about it online, though, and they were not only coming for Chloe and the low sales, they were coming for Queen B. Look. This person said, Chloe Bailey selling under 10,000 is crazy. She sold less than Koi LeRae. All those big features being groomed as Beyonce's protege, viral thirst traps, etc., for nothing. She should have stayed in that group with her sister. They had a platinum Grammy-nominated Grammy album together. The next person said, y'all could talk about Chloe all y'all want to, but the truth of the, of the matter is, if you had to sell 10,000 of anything you made with your own talents in a week, you could never do it. And this person says they demand a recount. <laughs> well, look, Beyonce, let's be very clear. Beyonce doesn't promote anything but Beyonce. She doesn't promote anything but her, Blue Ivy, the Grammy-winning Grammy artist, producer uh, Blue Ivy, and her husband, Jay-Z. If she ain't promoting those things, she ain't promoting it. She don't put captions. All she puts is a photo, and she leaves you to imagine. She dropped a whole album for the gay community, the most invisible community in the world, and hasn't dropped a visual for that. So why you thought she was going to go and post something for Chloe? And at the same time, she gives Chloe the platform. She's not responsible for Chloe's success. On the flip side, Chloe was invited here to the Jason Lee show in Hollywood Unlocked. She hasn't made it yet, although I know she's coming, and we're going to get into it when she comes. And she, Chloe knows I support her. I've seen her everywhere from the vice president's house to the, the Grammys to I, everywhere I go, I see Chloe, and she knows how much I love her and her sister and her mom. So let's be very clear about Oh, Annie Bet, by the way, um, her publicist. But yeah, 10,000 albums sold. Uh, it doesn't mean she's a flop, does no. it? No. You have to, uh, first of all, people cannot compare the music business to the music business you used to know because the internet and this millennial stuff has changed. Everything is streaming, everything is digital. So it's kind of impossible to get a people. First of all, they have short tension spans. Nobody wants a whole bunch of stuff at once. So that's why now a lot of artists are just releasing singles or EPs. Mm -hmm. It's impossible without like, you know, like even she has Beyonce's team literally and she still couldn't sell 10,000. It's not her fault. It's just the state of the music industry. Well, fans think it's this. Fan called out Beyonce. Look, Beyonce is nasty for not promoting <laughs> Chloe's album. A simple <laughs> IG repost would have probably gave Chloe a top 50 debut. Mind you, if it was Nicki's artist, they would have got dragged her to hell or back. Uh, this person said, Beyonce literally hates her. LOL. Didn't do anything for the album. Couldn't even give her a feature, and she not even open enough for her during her tour. Chloe need to leave that label. Another fan said, Chloe was better off remaining independent because Beyonce is paving the way for Blue and nobody else. Chloe will make it further when she realized that because she has it. 
but she can't overshine the heir to the throne. And the other person said, not to be funny, but I really want to know, what was the point of Beyonce signing Chloe? Was it like for a look so that someone could be under her? I don't get it. Because how do you let your artist drop an album and you don't support it once and now she sold 10,000? Another person said, y'all want Beyonce to carry someone else's career so bad, please leave mother alone. <laughs> Chloe can carry this. Y'all talking as if Beyonce promoting would have made Chloe have crazy numbers. Y'all would still hate the album. What's the point? Y'all just want to blame everyone at this point. Listen, uh, Beyonce didn't post, just so we're very clear, she didn't even tweet or post anything with the Megan Thee Stallion remix that she did that they ended up winning a Grammy for. So let's be clear that that ever happened. Beyonce promotes Beyonce, Blue, and Jay-Z. She don't even promote the other two kids. Where is Rumi and Suri? Right. You see what I'm saying? Solange, where you at? I'm just saying Beyonce focuses on Beyonce. But I, I do believe that it's Chloe's responsibility to figure this out. Now, I will say to you artists out there, y'all got to pull up where the culture exists. If it ain't Hollywood Unlocked, if it's not the Jason Lee show, Breakfast Club, you know, show, show up, you know, Joe Budden, show up to the spaces where people are actually waiting to hear what you have to say about your album. Uh, I will say Chloe's doing a lot of acting right now. She is everywhere. She's in the movie Swarm, where she acted her ass off, literally with Damson behind it, pounding it to death. Um, and then, you know, and she died. For those of you who hadn't seen it, she dies. Oh, I, I didn't even watch it. it. I didn't even want to see it. <laughs> well, she dies. She dies. But I, I feel like it. she killed herself. To me, it's just a big enough accomplishment, though. I'm just going to erase that from people's memories it's a big enough accomplishment to be signed by beyonce period like that's that's the accomplishment right there and same like usher signed justin bieber they're not blaming Honey like justin usher. bieber blew up yeah but that, that goes shit. with that entitlement see, why, see how on. white folks always bring up when other white folks do better with black help but black support don't support black that was racist no <laughs> i mean to your point first right. of all usher. anyway her, her her boyfriend's black I think, <laughs> to your point, you're right about the blogs. Because even when I'm working with music people, first of all, I'm not a blog. I'm, I'm not saying with the blogs. Well, what you, blogs are we talking Hollywood about? Hollywood Unlocked is not. No, a it's blog. not. It's a media, multimedia company that covers culture, but has a blog aspect. That's because that's how you choose to see it. No, but has, I, it's a media company. But would you still write articles and stories? I don't write articles. Well, the writers do. So do writers at Us Weekly and TMZ. And but for Hollywood people. Unlocked, yeah. But what's but the difference? Because anyway, we're black. I had a good see, point. the problem is y'all try to put the black media companies into little boxes where we're bloggers. That's why the celebrities out there selling 10,000 records walk around confused and lost because y'all for y'all think y'all let the industry tell you that the blogs are messy. No, we're where the culture lies. We matter of fact, shout out to all the blogs. <laughs> Let me give us all our flowers because without oh us, without God. us, y'all wouldn't know that Dalai Lama was trying to stick his tongue in the little kid mouth. Y'all wouldn't have known that albums wasn't being sold. Stop playing with the, put some respect on the black media, AKA blogs. No, close your mouth. You didn't let me finish my point. Close your I was mouth. Going exactly there. I was going there. I, what I was I, trying to say is, you're right. I tell clients the the marketing not companies, clients, the ones on OnlyFans. Who me? Well, I mean, if you're watching, you it, thank you for watching. At this point, I'm third party <laughs> Excuse me. Here. If you look for something, you no, go you, find you're it. You're the I only person I know put a jacket on and still uncover your nipples. I really would. It's hot in here. It's hot in here. Hot in here. And I want to take this. Take, really, I just have. I wear tanks, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to be like you know a little somewhat decent. But um, because really, I don't care. Like. Don't just make go, me go just, OnlyFans. Just, just, I really would do just it. Go ahead. That, go ahead. What, what is your yeah. point? What is your point? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm like over it now. But the anyway, point, go ahead, Rico, go we ahead, don't Rico. have point is that it goes with entitlement. <laughs> if Beyonce put her in a position to win, it's up to Chloe's work and whatever she gets, like her results, you can't blame it on Beyonce, right? She put her in a position. So, so basically, Chloe has to find herself. Yeah. Well, no, no, like for example, all right, cool. So you got me, you got me on this podcast. You gave me an opportunity, right? So now the people is mad at me because for whatever reason, you you just gave me the opportunity. So whatever I do with this is up to me. You're mm -hmm. not going to tell me how to talk, right? You just put me in here to do whatever. So Can you push that cup up further on the desk before it falls off? <laughs> <laughs> well, for her, I just feel like it's not Beyonce fault. The fans are just reaching because Beyonce is like, they're just looking for something. Right. Yeah. Nobody did it for Beyonce, so. Well, listen, Beyonce, you know we love you. You are a mother. I'm more mad at you for no visuals for this last album. I've played the album. Well, I know you have visuals. I know for a fact you have visuals because I know people in them. <laughs> but I don't know where they are. And I bought tickets to see your show. I have four tickets 
on the stage because I'm going to run out and swarm you when you're dancing. I'm going to swarm you. OK, can you imagine what is that? Wait, you, you have to a, watch the movie. Could you imagine if we go to the Beyonce concert and I run out on stage to hug Beyonce? That would be the most. They're gonna tase you. But that would be the most. I'd be gone, far gone from there. Julius loves me. I'd be far. I've chased her before. I'll chase her again. You've seen the video. It's not true, but whatever. Mm. All right. Well, listen. At a recent show, Chloe. This is what I love you for, Chloe. Chloe, when you meet her privately, is the nicest, sweetest girl. She's very like, oh my god, like very nice, whatever. But baby, Chloe had enough of y'all playing around with her good name, and she was at a concert. That's what she had to say. I don't have another song to sing. I just wanted to say hi again because I couldn't let go of this feeling. Make sure you all are supporting the motherfucking album. Fuck with the fuck. Everybody got to fucking say and they can kiss my black ass. Because I know you guys love me. And this is all I need. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your energy. Ooh, I get a fan. You no, know, I love the fans. This is cute. Thank you, boo. Okay, guys. I love you. Thank you again. Bye, right, guys. I love you. God bless. You all don't know how much you mean to me. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and that's on that. And people okay. saying Bye. she flopped. I was going to get into this last week, but then I said, you know, I really don't want to go there because every time I talk about the Kardashians, you guys think I don't like them. And I was actually telling myself that, well, let me just bring it up. This. We have to talk about this. Okay. This woman paid to look like Kim Kardashian. People think that I don't like Kim Kardashian. I've lost some respect for the Kardashians, of course, because, you know, I have my own personal issues. And I think in this game, it's not nice to like or hate anybody. Not nice to hate anybody. But if I'm going to hate on anybody, it's going to be the Kardashians because they they could take it. That could be a black dick. All right, cool. Now, look, there was a model, a former Versace model, who paid $600,000 to look like Kim Kardashian, which is crazy because you probably never met Kim. And this is where I have to be honest. Kim up front is a very beautiful girl without makeup. She's mm -hmm. she's more beautiful without makeup than with all that other shit. Anyway, uh, she now, this woman, this woman right here, has now reverted back to her natural appearance. She's 29 years old. Her name is Jennifer, Jennifer Pampelona. She went, underwent 40 procedures to look like Kim Kardashian. Now, this is a photo of them side by side. Just take a look. Let me bring it up here. Okay. this She looks more like Selena Powell on the left than she does Kim Kardashian. But whatever. Let me show you the list of all the surgeries Jennifer got. Take a look. She got 25 butt procedures, fat implants and removals. She got two surgeries to remove eight ribs. She got two breast implants done. She had two rhinoplasties on her nose. She had two liposuctions. She got cheek fillers, lip fillers, veneers, fat injection to her thighs, cheek fillers removed, facelift, and a face buckle lift. You damn fool. Well, Jennifer may have initially wanted to look like Kim, uh, and she wanted, uh, you know, to, to be just like her, I guess. She said it completely overshadowed her other qualities, um, like things that none of us care about because we're never going to talk about it again. Though she helped, uh, you know, she had the help of a doctor in Istanbul, Turkey. Jennifer spent another $120,000 to go and look like herself again. So altogether, where's the button at? This clown spent $720,000 to look like somebody and then to unlook like them, which she realized was just all due to a mental health illness called body dysmorphia. I suffer from body dysmorphia, so let me just say that's a real thing. I have lost two, I lost 123, no, I lost 100, yeah, and 23 pounds because I'm 200 now. Um, and I still feel like the same fat guy sometimes, so that's why I keep losing weight. But anyway, so I get that body dysmorphia is real, and I don't want to make light of that. But I do think that there's something wrong with anybody who looks at another human being and says, I'm going to have all the surgeries to look like them. I had surgery, and I changed my whole lifestyle to be healthier as an individual, not because I wanted to look like Drake. It just happened that I, we kind of look alike. I think I'm cuter, but whatever. I'll let you all say that he has more money than I do. Uh, would you ever spend this kind of money to look like somebody? No. 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 It's like, when I saw that, it's like what you order off Amazon versus AliExpress. So it's like, like. Uh, nah, she looked like she from Wish. 
<laughs> yeah, she was like, she's I definitely wish. like she's definitely kind of giving go. AliExpress a little bit. But it's like she doesn't look horrible though. I'll give her that. But she like, looks pretty. Yeah, pretty okay. No, she's a beautiful but, girl. And the fact I just feel like to okay. spend over seven hundred thousand dollars, but just shows you money can't buy you happiness. She spent all the no, money, right. looked like Kim K. Then she didn't like that she looked like Kim K. So then she spent more money to look more like herself. Well, she's, no, it's not. It's it's money. Those of you who are ugly are not ugly because of anything other than you don't have money. She no, Jason, had. you look good. But you do, like, I remember you do have body dysmorphia. Because when we were in D.C. and you were trying on the coat and it looked, sna you look snatched in it. And you're like, oh, like, are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm like, what? You look good. Okay, let's be very clear. We were in D.C. to go to see the president. Correct. And it was cold. And was I didn't freezing. pack a jacket. So we went and bought a $6,500 coat. It was money. Money makes you warm. Money makes you cute. Those of you who are ugly, it's just that's the way that God made it for you. It's not. You just got to get your money up. Then you could change things. You could spend seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars to look like Kim. Now the crazy part is, they didn't see Kim without makeup because Kim natural without yeah, all that so is bad. a very, very beautiful bad. girl. She, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just people hate her because of different things, which we'll get into. I'll tell you why I hate the Kardashians next. But go ahead, Rico. What were you gonna say? No, I was just, <laughs> I was just gonna say that like why pay so much so you can look like somebody. because it's expensive. But, but you could have. Uh, what I meant to say is that you could have money and still be ugly. <laughs> what is a what period? No, 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 no. What is Jay Z it, said, what is "I'm a billionaire. I'm cute." No, but so. I'm saying like I have right. I have met men's that are ugly but get a bunch of women's because they're money. So you don't need to be attractive. Yeah, but at body all. dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia is not about ha getting people. It's about feeling a certain way about yourself. You could look in the mirror and see beauty, and still you could look in the mirror and be beautiful and yeah. still see ugly. So that's a real thing. So she's identifying now that she had a mental health issue. She should have probably gotten that taken care of. And I also feel like these doctors who are taking a lot of money, those of you out there, Dr. Miami, not saying you're one of them, but any of you doctors that are doing these procedures and commercializing your work and making it popular and famous with celebrities and using influencers to promote your businesses, you need to make sure that your patients are mentally stable and physically healthy when they're coming in and spending yeah. all this money. I can tell you when I went and got my procedure done, there were many phone calls, lots of blood work. There was work on my heart to make sure I could undergo that. But that was because I took control of the situation. My doctor wanted me to do it, but I also wanted to make sure that I could survive a surgery and that after the surgery, I knew that I had to make all these different changes. So I just feel like it's on you. And that's why when people say, oh my God, you had the, the gastric sleeve and you look healthier than a lot of people to get it. Because y'all fat asses be going in there and getting the sleeve and then running out there to Jack in the Box, not thinking about the fact that you could become unhealthy again. It's supposed to help you restart your life. I don't want to look like anybody. Now, I won't lie and say that the body dysmorphia didn't lead me back to another doctor to go un to undergo an evaluation for perfecting the body that I have. Now, that shit was like 160 grand, so until my care credit cuts in, I don't know if I'm going to do it. But I might do it. And if I do it, it's not because I'm trying to look like Shamar Moore. It's because I want to look a certain way, not because it's somebody else. But what also, I do feel like, and this is fact, so this is not allegedly, but the Kardashians have been caught. This is no shade, no shade. They have been caught to Photoshop their own photos. <laughs> and so I feel like with filters and like the, the doctors who do that show botched, they said that people come in with filters and are like, make me look like this. And they're like, that's un realistic, realistic. Yeah. and like the kardashians are an unrealistic thing so i just, it's just sad it's all types of sad our generation is kind of just sad no question she said she went to turkey istanbul and spent almost a million dollars like everything over there is so cheap how is that possible oh, that's where you got your teeth yes it is and i'm going to get some more stuff too uh but you don't need anything Lee. You it's look not so about good. listen it's not um, about excuse that. me i'm going with him let's continue well you guys both <laughs> look good me. let's move on uh well anyway she's detransitioned and we're not talking about caitlin Jennifer, detransitioned, <laughs> de, de okay, um, because she didn't want to be called a, a Kardashian. And I could tell you why I wouldn't want to be called a Kardashian or a Jenner right now, and that's because this little bitch Kendall done fucked everything up. Kendall, you have pissed off Puerto Rico and everybody in the Spanish community. Am I okay? okay? I have Kendall. never in my life seen so much hate. There was a, a girl, and you know what's the crazy part? <clears throat> that... Out of all the Kardashians, she's like, she was everybody's favorite because, you know, she's whatever. Well, but now she's like the most. Let me set it up. Kendall used to date a guy named Devin Booker. Devin Booker is a really, really successful basketball player who's worth 
hundreds of millions of dollars. They were dating. He's a black guy. He was over there in Phoenix, I think, or whatever. They were dating. They were a couple. Well, let me show you the picture of what's going on now. There's three of them. Devin is over there on her whatever side, the right side of the screen. He was in Phoenix Suns with my boo, Kelly Obrey. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> and then Bad Bunny, that's him in Happier Times. Well, listen, Kendall Jenner, who was everybody's favorite Kardashian Jenner, is now under fire because she didn't swam over to Puerto Rico and got the boy. <laughs> Now, Bad Bunny, I used to be, you know, I used to be in love with Bad Bunny when he would like wear his little skirts and lay on, you know, the Instagram with his butt out. Cause I thought, you know, maybe he was a bottom or something. But apparently he was just metrosexual and kind of playing into. Hold on, where's my button at? Uh, Allegedly. The community. Well, now he's dating Kendall Jenner. Let me show you a picture of them on a horse together. Now, you know, when you go horseback riding and get held like this. Yeah. Now, a lot of you are sad because y'all know the Kardashians is getting all the dick that all y'all wanted. It, well, maybe not Lamar Odom and maybe not Tristan Thompson. That's just that dick just wasn't worth all the drama that they went through. But either way, you know that a lot of these girls are getting it. Bad Bunny has is probably the most successful artist in the industry right now. He surpassed everybody from Drake. Every He surpassed them all doing arena tours. He made the most money. Mm -hmm. um, and so people are like, damn, how the Kardashians get another sad part is that, and this goes to what Rico was saying, a lot of you guys want to get with these Kardashians because you want to be famous. Bad Bunny did not need it because he has all the fame. He has everything right now. And I mm -hmm. thought he was in a relationship. But why, what are people saying about well, Bad Bunny nah, now? No, nah, no, he has been open about his relationship. He has always saying that he's with this girl. Her name is Gabriella, mm -hmm. I think. Allegedly. Are they still together? No, no. So no. they're like in an open relationship, meaning like, you know, they're still gay to, you know, mess around. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now with this photo circulating and the way that I see the people reacting, I don't think they're together. And I don't know why nobody liked them together. No. And all the bitches on TikTok are mad. All the Spanish girls are mad. Yes, I don't know. I don't know why, though. And they call... Kendall, this is me reading on the internet, they're calling her a culture vulture because she has that 818 tequila and did a whole like cultural appropriation with braids and a cowboy hat, like this whole Kendall Mexican Jenner type. was the same Kardashian Jenner who did the whole Pepsi commercial yes. that was very controversial She's years been canceled ago. Before. She's been canceled. I mean, listen, the Kardashians are bad for the culture. Let's just Period. be very clear. They're bad for the culture. And as you start to really sit in their shit, for, you start to see it for what it is. I always give props to Jordan Woods for getting out of their out of mm -hmm. their shadow. She's one to figure it out, and she's done a phenomenal job of being able to stand on her own two black feet with her black man, <laughs> and she's doing great. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I, it's just really sad to see because I didn't see Bad Bunny coming. I thought Bad Bunny was like he he was doing everything right for his culture. I think right. getting with this white girl. Do you think it's for press? I think he probably just wants to fuck her. Probably I don't know. I don't. I don't see them staying together. Though. Cause he wrote, he shaded Devin Booker in the song. You yeah, saw he that? Did. He did. He said that the sun in Puerto Rico shines brighter, yeah, hotter, he say he's hot is hotter yeah, than he in Phoenix. Like hotter. shades to Devin Booker for playing for the Phoenix Suns. But Devin Booker, he got. Devin Booker got money too. Devin Booker is successful. Devin is not worried about this. No. Um, yeah, he's, no. he's I think it's a bad look for Bad Bunny. I don't yes. think that you profit in any way. Um, yes, we're talking about you, but we've been talking about you anyway because we're proud of you and everything that you're doing. And we're in love with I you. Saw, um, I saw a Bad Bunny at the Billboard Hot 100, mm -hmm. Billboard Power 100 party where he honored his manager. It was the most touching, emotional speech. Their relationship, their support for one another. I mean, he seems like a really great guy. I'm telling you, Bad Bunny, this is a bad move. Bad, bad, bad bunny. Get out while you can. I'm telling you, they're all going to ruin you. And if I see you in a picture with Caitlyn, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done, done, done. That will be your mother, father-in-law. Well, it's he does over. stand up for Moyle trans Moyle. rights in Puerto Rico, too. So he was standing up for trans no, rights No, stand up for Rico. trans rights, and that's great. Maybe but you, not Yeah, but Caitlin. I don't... Not Caitlyn is not a Caitlin. Republican, wants to be the governor. Like, no, the whole thing is bad. Um, <sighs> no. All right. All right, guys, enough with all of that. It's time for... My final thoughts, and it's time for thoughts and prayers. America, what have you done with yourself? A country built on democracy dispelled that rumor when they dispelled those two black leaders who clearly love the children more than the NRA. America, the only place where the vice president, a black woman, a second in charge, the second most powerful person in the world, a black woman, who we often yell, let's protect, can try to protect democracy and our children and still be told it's too late. And speaking of our children, they say that the tongue is a powerful thing. 
which is why the Dalai Lama's sick ass tried to stick his old wrinkly tongue in the mouth of a minor for the whole world to see. Yet, the world is more outraged at a rapper who used her platform to address the sicko. But then again, protecting black women or women of color is just selective outrage in America, which means unless TikTok says to do so, we just won't do it. See, what we're learning about ourselves as we look at the sick world is that we're equally as sick. I mean, we may not be sticking our tongues down the throats of our kids or climbing up walls to reenact our favorite Marvel superhero like the MAGA Village, but we're still sick. Sick to believe that democracy is a permanent thing. Sick to believe that America is somehow the land of the free, where freedom doesn't come without a price. See, the real freedom comes from controlling our narrative, building your platform like I have to use that platform to push your narrative far away from the confines of crazy and the solitude of stupidity. Now, guns are a great thing. Let me be very clear. I got a whole bunch of them. But mental health is also real. And as we know, this country's investment in mental health is anything pharmaceutical related. This I gotta be popping culture, whether it's popping on social media with that blue check or popping that perk that starts the end of your life as you know it. Stop being woke for social media and wake up. Because if Meta issued a blue check mark for everyone registered to vote, I bet you see a blue checks, they won't be black. You can figure that one out later. Until then, keep watching because the revolution is being televised. Some of y'all just TikToking right through it. All right, and also make sure you get that uh, Gag Nation merch. Let me show you that commercial one more time. Take a look. The Gag Nation line is finally here. So you know when somebody tells me that I can't do something, what am I going to do? I'm going to do it. So I didn't just build my own show, The Jason Lee Show. I built my own merch line too. Why? Because the Gag Nation, all of you, you're my family. And everything's fire. Trust me. We got sneakers, robes, hoodies, slides, mugs, and a smoker's bundle with trays and grinders for all y'all that do all of that. It's a limited time drop. It's only here one time, so once it's sold out, you're never going to get it again. So head over right now to the website, hollywoodunlock.com slash shop, to secure your spot right now. All right, that's it for the Jason Lee Podcast. want to make sure that you tune in every week, every Friday. We're here, and every Monday, we drop the exclusive audio from everything you hear on the Jason Lee Show over at Revolt. So make sure that you're tuning in. Subscribe to us everywhere. We're even on SoundCloud now for all of you rappers who are trying to meet NBA Youngboy. Okay, look, until the next time, make sure you're following up with us on social media at Hollywood Unlock at the Jason Lee Show. Make sure you're following my bullpen also. And uh, next week, wait, this week or next week? Is it next week? Jamil Hill? Mm-hmm. We got Jamil Hill. Let me show you. This is Jamil right here. Applaud, how to applaud. There's, I had to find my applause button. Ooh, I love Jamil. All right, we talk about her book, Uphill, and we also talk about, uh, that's her book, beautiful cover, and we also talk about her Unbothered podcast. Make sure you're going and checking out both right now, okay? And in case you missed the tea that she spilled, this is a teaser of that interview. But you're good friends with Bob Iger. You were cool with him. Yeah, I'm cool with Bob. Mm-hmm. He's like the god of Disney. I mean, he's, he's like, I mean, some people would say like he's easily top five most powerful people in Hollywood. When you went to talk to him about the Donald Trump tweets, mm-hmm. Bob Iger and Barack Obama were close friends. Yeah, they were they good go. friends. So what happened, you know, he was like, listen, the policy is the policy. I felt like it was another violation. And that's why you got suspended. Like, again, he wouldn't, I didn't need an explanation. He, I wasn't asking for one. I wasn't saying like, please, no, none of that. I knew what, it, what time it was. And so he's like, yeah, and I think he mentioned he had been in some kind of recent social contact with former President Barack Obama. And he, he agreed <laughs> that like, oh, you had no choice but to suspend her. And I was like, damn, Barack. <laughs> Make sure you're streaming this show everywhere that shows are uh, streaming. So whether it's Apple or Spotify, iHeart, even over there, like I said, on um, SoundCloud. We're everywhere. All right. Well, that's it. Bye. So Jason Lee Podcast.